Welcome to Westlake Pro. My name is Taylor, and sitting next to me is Collier Spreen, Avid Pro Audio Application Specialist. Today we're talking about the Avid Pro Tools dock, as well as the control app, and incorporating an S3 control surface. So, Collier, take it away. Let's do it. So the dock is really a hybrid surface, a combination of a hardware surface with fader and soft keys, but it's also a dock for the iPad running Pro Tools Control. They're all connected via Ucon. They're all talking to the workstation via Ucontrol, whether it's uh, hardwired through, U for, through Ethernet, rather, or Wi-Fi uh, on the iPad. We've got soft keys galore. We've got transport. We've got a jog shuttle wheel that can be assigned to many navigational modes. We've got a 100 millimeter fader, um, pretty much a match to any S3 fader, solo mute, select key, record mode even a meter, uh, plus these touch strips, a horizontal and a vertical one that allow you to sign any command or function to those soft key touch strips. There's also shift keys. There's one on either side that allows you a second layer, sort of a shift layer to almost all the soft keys on the iPad. There's also four encoders on either side, and we'll dive into those in a little bit um, to show you how those interact with the iPad Pro Tools control app. The Pro Tools Control app is running on an iPad, and it's actually a standalone app. It's a free application on the iTunes App Store, uh, but you can actually talk directly to Pro Tools without any of this. But with the dock, it becomes this really cool hybrid controller. I can allow, I can access many, many things from it and access it as well from the dock. Um, there's four main views on Pro Tools Control. There's the mixer view that gives you a mixer. There's actually a color universe bar that follows the, it, it displays the colors of the tracks of your session. And I can navigate to any track within the session from there and then control it from there. The second view is the tracks page that allows up to 40 tracks on screen, which we've got 40 here. I can choose any of my tracks. I can show the record input mute solo status. If I want to solo a track, I can do this here. I can also double tap solo and get out of it. So. I have complete solo mute record input status right from the iPad itself. I also have um, transport controls on the iPad so I can actually stop and start it, use it as a remote control, whatever I want to do right from the iPad app. I can also adjust the actual automation mode of each track as well by holding the mode that I wish to put the track into and I'll put these tracks in touch and read and I'm ready to go. So very, very simple, very quick. Uh, the third view is called channel view. So now if I grab, say, this kick track, uh, I can look at inserts, input, dynamics, EQ, aux sends, panning, groups, mix, and if the session has it, heat. I can see heat from this view as well. So if I go to my inserts, I can look at my channel strip and pull it up, and I can either tweak the controls, the EQ, from the dock, or I can actually use it right on Pro Tools Control as well. Um, and if I want to put a send on here, I can actually say uh, I want to go to config mode and put a send on B. Uh, let's send it to uh, bus 8, select it and put it in. Uh, now I'm in send mode and I've got select and I can actually use the bus. I can make it pre-fader or post-fader. Uh, I can mute it or I can automate anything within the fader. So very, very simple, very easy access to every parameter view. So we've got eight tracks visible in channel page, and then I've got the chiclets down below, the blocks, the parameter blocks for all the parameters of the channel. So the final and fourth view on Pro Tools Control app is the soft keys page, and it's exactly that. With Pro Tools, there's over 150 pages of soft keys. There's 24 soft keys per page, so that's over 3,500 Yukon commands, uh, keyboard macros, uh, soft key pre-programmed or user programmable. Um, it's great for navigation for literally any, any editing function. If I want to pull up my memory locators, I can actually pull them up and see the name of my memory locators. I can pull up the memory location window on Pro Tools and hide it. I can go home and say, look, I want to go to my automation window, pull up my automation window. Uh, if I want to go to my advanced automation, if I have layouts within my session, which I do, I can change those or recall those right from the surface. I also have uh, pre-programmed, I have four user pages. So if I want to record some functions or if I want to create some custom user pages, and I use this all the time, I pretty much work on my user page one and two. I really don't need anything else other than that to get a lot done 
Um, I can pull up tons of things on Pro Tools. I can show hide things. I can, my any freeze commit collaboration functions. If I want to pull up the task manager, I can show hide that. I can show artist chat, anything I want to. So very, very powerful, uh, very, very user customizable as well, soft keys wise. There's also a set of soft keys down below, 12 soft keys that have separate pages that are completely independent from the main soft keys. And in the soft keys view, just like the channel view, I still have access to the eight channels viewable but scrollable, and I have the universe bar that allows me to access any channel in my session.